Hey, this is Mike. Thank you so much for choosing this video. Today I'm in Wilmington, North Carolina, visiting Parkway Hyundai, and I'm checking out the completely redesigned 2019 Hyundai Santa Fe. Now this is in the limited trim level, and I am feeling the sting of the competitors right now because this is a fantastic vehicle. Let's go ahead and check it out. This Santa Fe is sitting on 235, 60, hand-cook tires wrapped around 18-inch alloy wheels with a two-tone gray finish with the alloy popping through. It also has four-wheel disc brakes with ventilated disc rotors in the front and solid disc rotors in the back. The name of this color is Machine Gray, and it's a fitting name for this color, I suppose. Looking pretty nice. Now it blends well with the accents in this vehicle. So here in the front, all the way across the front, so you have this smoked chrome or metallic accent that goes underneath the daytime running lights and across the front and through there, kind of blending in the otherwise separated daytime running lights powered by LEDs up here. There's a big emblem in chrome the only thing really shiny up here and check out that grill plenty of airflow but with the contrasting colors it doesn't stand out too much I wonder what it would look like in a different color like say white or something the grill may look look bigger than what it really is so the daytime running lights are here at the very top the headlights are down here in projector tubes and black bezels. They also have a functional wheel well ventilation there on the outsides. And at the very bottom is your fog lights powered by LEDs. Now the headlights are two projector tubes, high and low beams. The fog lights and the daytime running lights, all LED. Now the turn signal on the front and the back is powered by a tungsten filament inside of a halogen filled glass bulb. So it's basically a standard bulb for your front and rear turn signals. Everything else is LED. Expertly hidden is the radar adaptive cruise control sensor right in here. So it's not standing out and looking bad. It really doesn't take away from the overall design here in the front. So looking at the profile, check it out. Nice, sleek, long wheelbase and you can see it has the plastic around the base underneath the doors as well as around the wheel wells chrome around the entire all the windows as well as the gloss black pillars and of course the back windows are tinted the front windows are not from the factory um, so you can go ahead and tint the front windows if it's illegal in your area and you have this one solid appearance of the glass which adds to the look in my opinion then you have that, that metallic accent here on the side continuing here in the back so you have it in the front the sides and all the way around to the back top of the side mirror is body colored as well as the handles and the wheels match this color really well this is what the key looks like really nice high quality feeling key and it has the uh the metallic portions top and bottom lock and unlock the ability to open up the power lift gate also a panic button here now this is a proximity key designed where you can just keep this in your pocket and use the vehicle 100 percent you don't have to take it out you can just keep it with you it could be in a bag or whatever let's go ahead and push this panic button and see what the horn sounds like Ooh, that's a strong horn not a little beepy horn like you would expect a lot of vehicles have this little beepy horn. This is a strong, loud, deep horn, commanding your attention if you're in traffic. As long as you have the key with you, it can be in your pocket, in a bag, it's just, as long as it's with it, within a close proximity of the outside of the door, you can lock or unlock the doors by pushing this button. So let's go ahead and push it, it locks the vehicle. To unlock it, push it again. As long as it senses that key on the outside of the door, it'll allow you access to the vehicle. Another thing I noticed, that this one has a physical key back here. 
So right back there, there's the physical key location uh, for your physical key. Now I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that this cover would, would pop off or whatever, but I haven't attempted that, but that's where your physical key location is. So before we look on the inside of the vehicle, I wanna point something out about this door. Now this is a big deal to me. When you open the door, you notice that the actual door goes all the way down to the very bottom of the vehicle, okay? So when you close it, it covers up that whole side. So as you get your car dirty and you're driving it around, when you get in the vehicle, the dirt stays on the outside of the door. So that way, this portion stays relatively clean and when you're getting in and out, your pants or your clothes in general don't get dirty getting in and out of the vehicle. Because typically your, your leg or some sort of clothing touches the side of the vehicle typically when you're getting in and out. And this is a huge deal. If you're going for a job interview that and you show up with dirty pants or something like that because you, you were in a hurry and you weren't paying attention and you dirtied your pants on the way in the vehicle, not so good. This helps with that by keeping the dirt outside and not within the door jam, which I think is a fantastic idea. All right, so looking on the inside of the passenger side door, man, this is, this is nice. Everything feels and looks really good. The sheen, the texture, everything about it looks fantastic and feels good. So the soft touch surfaces are at the very top, soft. You have an accent here that goes all the way down around. It's kind of like a carbon fiber type, sort of like that, I suppose. Then you have the metallic handles. This is a hard touch surface. And then you have the soft touch, kind of like a vinyl type material around your arm with the contrast stitching and a French design. And check out the texturing on the speaker grill. Oh man, that looks good. It's actually three-dimensional, popping out there, and the speaker grill goes all the way under here. It doesn't stop, continues all the way back here. That's a nice touch. And it's underscored with the infinity name, badging, and that metallic accent. Really nice. And then you have your bottle holder and some storage space here at the very bottom. You know, it extends to the forward position that way it's a little bit easier to get to and you can put papers or whatever it's nice okay so here's the threshold with the sill plate with the Santa Fe name pretty nice power seat here for the passenger and it goes up it goes down it tilts it goes forward and back and then you have the tilt here. So it has a lot of versatility in for a passenger seat. Typically this is limited to forward and back and then tilt the back and that's it. So this one has all that functionality in the passenger seat. It is a heated leather trim seat. So you can see it has the smooth leather with the stitching on the outside. As you move into the center portion, it has the perforations and stitching really nice and comfortable seats you check out the bolstering on the side nice big cushy bolstering on the side not intrusive just gives you a really planted feel in these seats soft touch surface here on the side for your knee as well as the dash it's like a very nice you gotta feel that. First thing when you see this vehicle in person, feel the dashboard. It just has this really nice quality feel to it and soft. And this multi-leveled has that little accent across the front. And then you also have a storage pocket in here. Check this out. Isn't that nice? Quick access and it has a little lip on it so that way your stuff doesn't fly out when you floor it. Check out the glove compartment. Nice, big, smooth on the inside, easy to clean out glove compartment. And the floorboard, all wide. Just like no taper, maybe a little bit of taper in there, but it just gets even better as you go down in there. It's 
it's just nice wide open space and it does have a little hook there to keep the floor mat in place so it doesn't slide around on you and check out this headliner it's like a gray color and it looks and feels fantastic not to mention the huge panoramic sunroof look at that we're gonna look at that a little bit more later on but man headliner you got to check that out as well when you see it in person lots of cool stuff in this vehicle even gets better here in the back door actually you have the same door design in which it goes all the way down to the bottom you have basically the same design here almost without the carbon fiber type accent soft touch here as well as around your arm you have the contrast stitching french design little holder right there three-dimensional textured speaker grill underscored with a metallic plenty of storage space at the bottom and you have a shade so you can lower raise and lower the shade in addition to the privacy glass and that nice and you have a nice aluminum sill plate in the threshold you have the same style seats basically back here except for it's a bench seat less bolstering you do have an armrest that's removable with the cup holders. Let's go ahead and move that out of the way. Now the back of the seats, they recline slightly. So this left seat here is reclined all the way back and then the other one is in its normal position. You can also move these seats forward and back. And then you have a pocket here on the back of the passenger seat but not the driver's seat. And then you have that hard plastic, durable back of the seat with the pocket there. That's nice. Plenty of leg room, even with the seat all the way back. I'm going to put all the specs and dimensions in the description. There's tons of information in the description. So check that out. A little storage space there. You have two USB charge ports. That's two of them. And look at that. Almost a completely flat floor back here. So if you're driving, in, if you're in the back seat, you're going to be well taken care of because you can charge your device, cell phone, pet tablet or whatever. You're not gonna be so claustrophobic because you have this massive sunroof above you. Uh, you have little storage spaces here on the door, behind the seats, in the center. You have the armrest, cup holders, all that stuff. You can recline the seat, you can move it forward and back, all that stuff. You even have the shades. So they're pretty much pampered back here. So looking at the back of the vehicle, you can see, well, first of all, you see these roof rails and that same non-reflective silver color and look how massive that sunroof is. Has a little shark fin antenna, kind of a wide body colored shark fin antenna right here. Third brake light is just under here at the top of the uh, glass. At the base of it is a windshield wiper or actually a rear glass wiper. And for some reason, the backup camera is slightly offset here. So not enough to really make a big deal, but it is offset, not in the very center position. Parking sensors across the back, they're kind of well placed and hidden right there. You can see them in that black portion. All LED tail lights, except for, like I mentioned, the turn signal which is at the, at the bottom. Check out that exhaust tip. It's like the real deal right there. Okay, so this has a power lift gate. You can of course use the key to lift it up or push a button under here. So I wish they would have just put the camera in the middle, offset the button. I think that would have been better, but whatever. Let's go ahead and push this button under here.
All right. So the shade is in place right now. This shade is actually, you can slide it back or you can completely remove it. Let's go ahead and slide it forward so we can check it out here. So if you have all the seats occupied with passengers, this is your cargo space, which I think is fantastic. Especially considering you can fold down the seats, one or the other, add to your cargo space while still maintaining passenger space. That's always nice. Subwoofer here on the far left. And then you have hooks here on the sides for a net pocket, which it includes. This particular one does. On the right side, you have a little storage cubby, 12 volt power supply. Also the ability to lower the seats. We'll get to that in just a minute. You have tie downs as well. They're in the forward position and in the back. Let's lift this mat up and look under here. So there's your tools for your spare tire. Under the second portion is large compartments, massive compartments here. And like I mentioned, the shade is removable. You can take it out of the vehicle completely or there's a spot for it right here. So you can see the ends go in there, right over top of the tools. You also have a storage space there. So you can utilize this space for the for extra storage, or you can put that, uh, that shade there, so that way you can keep it with you in case you wanna use it while you're out on a trip or whatever, um, but you're just not using it at the moment. So it has a lot of hidden storage underneath the floor there. It's pretty nice. You can also take that cover out in case you need some more vertical storage. But lowering these seats, so you can lower this one or that one to add to your cargo space. So let's go ahead and do that. So we push the right side. Let's go ahead and push that. And it softly folds down. So from here, if we have this long box, we can put it in here, still maintain the passenger space. Let's say you have a car seat in place, you don't want to take it out. You can lower this seat or the other seat, add to your cargo space and it's just really convenient to do so. Now these buttons will lower it, they will not raise it. You have to just lift it up on the side. Uh, it does lock when it goes down, so you have to pull up on the latch and release it and lift it up. That's also how you recline it as well, the latch on the side. The lower li the lift gate, you can simply push this button and it'll go down for you. The fuel door is here on the driver's side and it's a locking fuel door. So right now it's locked, it won't open. Unlock the doors. When you unlock the doors or lock the doors, this is how it just does it automatically. Go ahead and unlock the doors, and now it's unlocked. So that's easy, you don't have to think about it. You have a traditional cap, tether, and a place to hang the cap right here while you're pumping gas. Blind spot detection system and rear cross traffic alert indicators here on the side mirrors. And so this will let you know when there's a vehicle in your blind spot. And the sensor is right back here. So as you're driving, it'll sense a vehicle within one car length behind your vehicle. So, but if there's a vehicle coming in fast, you're not gonna have enough time so you, to, it may not give you a warning in time. So you still wanna check your blind spots, but the indicator just as an extra precaution there is located on the side mirrors. So let's go ahead and start it up. I'm inside the vehicle with the key in my pocket, put my foot on the brake, and hold it and push this button. So here's the floorboard in front of the driver's seat. You can see the floor mat hooks in place in two places now it's a little bit more critical that that mat stays in place and you have your accelerator and brake pedal with the accelerator pedal pivoting at the bottom large footrest here on the left side let's go ahead and take a look under the hood to open the hood there is a latch kind of in line with the right to this emblem right in there if you look right there and you put your hand in that spot you move it to the left and lift up so you can see it right here so the hood goes up by itself and holds itself up for you, which is nice. Has an insulation on the base, on, on the underside of the hood. Let's 
strut towers are braced in. Now it has, this vehicle has a lot of high strength steel. And I'm gonna have a lot of information in the description explaining the structural integrity of this vehicle, the specifications, and horsepower, all the little nitty gritty details that you can go into um, to learn as much or as little as you want. A lot of space here, you notice. There in the back is your exhaust. Your intake is here in the front. And wide open space, that's good for airflow as well as noise, just a little bit of a, uh, a dampener as far as the space around the engine. Here's your battery, it's also insulated here. GDI, so gasoline direct injection, 2.4 liter, 185 horsepower, 178 pound-feet of torque, paired to an eight-speed automatic transmission. The inside of the driver's side door is just like the other side, except for it has a few more buttons. So you have your power window controls here. Now you can, the front two are automatic, one touch up and down. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop it right there because I wanna point out something. This is a insulated glass, so it's a laminated glass and it has a piece of glass on the outside and the inside with an acoustic material sandwiched in between. This helps out with the structure, the, you know, make it a solid piece of glass, but also keeps the vibrations from getting through the glass and into the vehicle. So it helps out with sound a little bit. You have your, the ability to, your child locks basically, are also lock out the power windows. So they don't play around the windows. Door lock controls here, and then your side mirrors are adjusted. You just pick a side and adjust it with that little pad. So since the passenger seat had all these cool fancy features, the driver's seat has to one-up them, of course. So not only can you go up, down, tilt, and all that stuff with the driver's seat, but you also have power lumbar adjustment as well. So the driver always gets a little bit of extra pampering to the point where they probably become spoiled, I guess. And they're heated leather seats. To the left of the steering column, here's your dimmer switch for your interior gauges. Lane departure warning system, you can turn that on or off. Your blind spot detection system, rear cross traffic alert, you can turn that on or off as a little indicator light when it's on. The traction control, you can turn that off, default will always be on, and you can open up the power lift gate from right here. Tilt and telescoping steering column. And it's the, the lever for it is easy to find and easy to you just move it down, unlock it, and move it up to lock it. So it's pretty easy. Okay, sitting in the driver's seat, checking it out. Nice, really nice. Everything that you touch feels quality. Uh, all the, just the, the whole presence is nice in this vehicle. It's definitely a huge upgrade. So I have the seat all the way back and all the way down. I'm six feet tall and this would probably be a tiny bit further back than what I'd normally drive, but it's, I, I could drive this way if I had the steering wheel pulled forward a little bit. Knee room is good, leg room is good. And it's kind of dished out here a little bit for my knee. And then there's a, it's plenty of room, but there's also a pad here in case I had bumped my knee or something. So looking at the steering wheel, it's a leather wrapped steering wheel with almost a texture free leather portion has that metallic accent there at the bottom and then you have that simulated leather texture there in the center portion where where it's actually the synthetic materials there's a grip here at the top and the thickness is really good as well thickness is good it's soft to the touch really excellent feeling steering wheel so your cruise control is here on the right side. It's an adaptive cruise control. So you can adjust your distance between you and the vehicle in front of you. Cancel, you can turn it on. You can resume and set right there. This button and this button corresponds with the screen between the gauges, which we'll get to in just a minute. Here on the left side is your volume for your radio. Change through your tracks or your radio station on that side. Your Bluetooth controls here. Answer, hang up on your phone once it's paired voice recognition, and your mode, which is your audio input. 
windshield wiper controls on the right side, turn signals on your left with your headlight controls. So you have off, automatic, parking light, and then on. And your fog lights are controlled here, on or off, um, but there's it kind of protrudes to the back, so you can control it back here or up there, both fingers like so. That's pretty neat. Okay, so looking at the gauges, man, is it a nice blue background? And then you have the white lettering popping out of the black. Easy to focus on, easy to see, and easy on the eyes. Speedometer is there in the center portion with a digital speedometer as well. All that's digital screen in the center. On the left side and the right side is physical gauges. So you have your tachometer RPMs on the left. On the right side is your fuel gauge and your engine coolant temperature. But right there in the very center, uh, this whole portion around in here is all a screen. So what gear you're in, your outside temperature, odometer, and your distance to empty, all that's in part of a screen, which you can get more information. So very center of the, right where the digital speedometer is, we're gonna use these, these buttons here, this pages button, uh, up and down and an okay. So you push this in to make a selection, push that to change screens and then you go up and down. Okay, so right now I'm gonna push the pages button so you can see this is part of a menu system. You can see the little icons on the right side. Now if I'm in this screen, I can go down or up and change the view, change the information that's in the center. Push the pages, go down to the next one, and then I have those little bars on the right letting me know there's more information. Pages again, scroll down, make selections in here in the settings, Pages again goes back to the digital speedometer. So it has a little bit of additional information there in the center when I need it, but I don't have to go in there and I can just keep it on the digital speedometer. That would be my default screen anyway. And we have a little touch screen up here with physical buttons around the outside volume tune through the stations that's pretty traditional uh, radio right now we're in the home screen which is the button right there to get to and has a split uh, different icons and your mobile device and what your radio is doing so we push the radio here or on the screen pops up your presets on the left side what you're in at your your station uh, your band all that stuff let's go ahead and push the home so let's push media now so there's nothing connected in the media. So once you connect something, say to the USB auxiliary or US uh, or the uh, Bluetooth audio, that kind of thing, then we'll give you that option. Right now it's just saying, hey, there's nothing connected, so there's nothing to show you. You can change through your track here. Um, there's the home button, and then you go into your phone. Uh, there's no phone paired. Showing you how to pair a device. You can go to all menus here. So you can see the different options. It has Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. Capability, you just have to plug in your phone and leave it plugged into the USB port. It also has Blue Link. Also a complete user guide here that's searchable. So that's really nice. Auxiliary input, all that kind of stuff there. You notice it has the clock and everything here at the top as far as your calendar date easy to find four-way flashers your emergency triangle there some vehicles are just not so obvious this one's really obvious where it is it's easy to get to and that's a, I think that's a good thing okay so down here is your climate control driver and passenger there's your temperature there's actually your temperature sensors right in here for your driver and passenger right below it so that's neat so you have a digital display, your fan speed, where you want the air to blow, front and rear defrosters as well. Recirculate the air, turn your air conditioning on, all that. It does have cabin filters as well. Heated seat controls, you have a high, medium, and low, three-stage heated seat for your driver and passenger. So right in here is a 12-volt power supply. USB charger only, USB input, and auxiliary inputs and a large tray right here. This is a good spot to put your phone while you have it plugged in to the USB for your Android Auto and Apple CarPlay or just generally charging it or whatever. 
another place to put some stuff. There's some cup holders and it's open in the middle. Has a little rubber portion that's removable. You can take that out, clean it, put it back in. It's fairly easy to take in and out. Plus this portion has a rubber tray that's removable. Pretty much all these do, so that's good. Okay, so here's your shifter and nice feeling and it's good size. So let's go ahead and put it in reverse and check out the backup camera. It has active guidelines, so as I stir in the steering wheel, it'll turn in that direction. It's awfully bright, isn't it? Let's go ahead and put it in neutral, drive, and then you can always put it over here to this manual mode and downshift and upshift if you need to. You'll know what gear you're in because it'll show over here. And we're not done with the gauges. I'll show you some more stuff there in just a second once we get to it. Okay, so here's an electronic parking brake. Lift it up to engage it. Put your foot on the brake and push down to release it. Now you'll know it's on because it'll have you that nice bright red light there letting you know it's on. So let's go ahead and release it by holding the brake and pushing that down. Your parking sensors, you can turn those off if you want to. And your stop-start feature, this was something that's going to turn the engine off, basically, when certain parameters are met and you're sitting at a stoplight or a stop sign for a period of time holding the brake. It's going to, or just stopped in general because it does have the auto brake hold. Um, but it's going to turn the engine off to save gas, basically, is what the, the whole idea is. The brake hold, the auto hold, will hold the brake for you while you're sitting still and it's in drive to keep you from moving forward, just rolling around. And then if this is turned on, the it'll turn your engine off as well. As soon as you release your foot from the brake, the engine will restart and you're able to go. Uh, once you push the accelerator, it's going to release the auto hold and it will allow you to go forward. Now your drive mode. So this is where it's pretty cool. So it has three stages. So as you push it, right now we're in the... Now, okay, so we're in the comfort to begin with. You can see it's a blue. Put it in sport, check it out, it turns red. <laughs> Isn't that neat? So this will emphasize, um, you know, performance over fuel economy. Push it again, puts us in a smart mode. I guess that's like an eco mode or whatever. And then your comfort is your default. So you notice when you put it in sport, it says sport mode. You put it in smart, it lets you know it's a smart mode. You can see a little green at the top, and then you put it in comfort zone, all that kind of goes away. So that's your default, I suppose. There's a storage pocket here, the rubber liner. Okay, so here's your armrest, and it has the stitching on the ends, soft to the touch. And it lifts up, it has a little locking latch here. place to clip your registration or whatever under here as well a little tray that's removable it's actually a really big deep tray that's nice you can dump it and put it back in and then you have the storage compartment it's all black in there I wish it had a light like a light color it'd be easier to see in there and find stuff because you know you're gonna clutter it up so let's just see here how far it goes down it has a uh, like a felt liner and it's just a big square box basically Rearview mirror, it's an auto dim rearview mirror, which you could turn that feature on and off here. You have a digital compass as well. Home link garage door, put our controls on the right side. And then you have destination, your blue link, and a roadside assistance buttons over here on the left side. Place to put your shades, and it has a very, very soft felt lining, sort of like a super thick pool table type material, that kind of felt. And it's black on the inside. Probably be good if it was a lighter color, I don't know. So you have interior lights here. So you can turn them on individually like so. All of them like that. Or have them turn on with the door. When the door opens up, it'll turn them on when you have that set. This is for your sunroof and shade. We'll get to that in just a minute. But check it out. I showed you this before, but I really can't get over the uh, 
the, the texturing and the just overall look of the headliner, that gray looks really nice. So the visor has this nice big mirror and the light right here, so you can turn that on separately. So it's not tied in with the door, so it's a t separate light that you can turn on independently. It has a little clip here on the right side. It also extends out. Pretty much the same thing on the passenger side. Okay, so the sunroof. Uh, here's the control right there. So it's forward and back, basically, is how that operates. So let's take a look at it. Because it is massive. Look at that. Because we're way back there. So let's go ahead and move the shade back. And move that as well, all in one. I guess I push it full way. Make sure that's as far back as it goes, which is huge. The back portion is fixed. Hadn't figured out yet. I must be uh, pushing it too hard. Let's see if I can get just a shade. Yeah, if I bump it just a little tiny bit, it just moves the shade, yeah. So I was pushing it too hard. If you just push it just a little tiny bit, it just moves the shade back, and then that way you don't have to have the glass open. Now, uh, we already moved it back. Let's go ahead and push it up so we can bend it, push it up again to basically push it back down, and then we can move the shade the back forward because I don't want to have too much light in here. Now you notice the shade blocks 100% of the light which is nice. Like on a hot day like today, I don't want the sun in my face. I can have, um, you know, block it out completely, which is great. All right, so let's look at the visibility in the back. So I have one seat down, one seat up, just to give you an idea of the possibilities there um, as far as the headrest. Now you notice the headrest actually lines up with the pillar back there from this angle anyway. But plenty of glass, lots of windows back there to help you see out and of course it depends on your passengers getting in your way but good visibility it does have the backup camera the park the parking sensors blind spot monitor system rear cross traffic alert all that stuff to help you out as well so and, and it does have good visibility in my opinion as well so anyways so what do you think let me know what you think in the description about this vehicle and how it's going to compete in the market i think it's going to do a fantastic job it just has a really nice style i mean the way the doors connect with the rest of the styling just overall the materials everything very interesting so thank you for watching thank you to parkway hyundai here in wilmington north carolina for allowing me to show off another awesome vehicle i'll see you guys next time